special edition of the Sunday Law Update. And we are fortunate to have with us today, or this afternoon, David and Marion Lewis. They're dear friends of myself and my wife, Michelle. Uh, we have known them for a long time. <laughs> and I'm, uh, they are here with us, spending a few days with us, and we were just fortunate, fortunate enough to be able to come, and I encourage them to come with us to uh, State Line. We love being at State Line. You know, we haven't been here for a while because we have a, a church a little closer that we've been supporting, but every time we can, we sneak away. And so I have the privilege of introducing David and Marion. Uh, I'm hoping they can come back and do their full testimony, but David used to sing with Atlantic Star, uh, uh, with numbers on the, on the top of the chart. Uh, always, and I know some of you guys know that song, Always, and, and yep, and forever. <laughs> And, uh, and other numbers that Atlantic Star was popular for. He'll probably tell you a few more. And also, Marion was uh, kind of like a cover girl for Oil of Olay. Can you put it that way? And a model. And she's still as beautiful as ever. Amen, somebody? But not only that, they have, they have renounced the things of the world to lift up the name of Jesus. Somebody ought to say amen. And they have such wonderful voices. So without further ado, I'm so happy to have David and Marion Lewis to give us a special music. My dear friends and, and committed servants of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Cuke. Um, and praise the Lord, everyone who is, is here today. Uh, we want to welcome you back and, and thank you so much, um, Brother Jackson, for your amazing ministry. Um, I was just making sure that we're both here on camera. But um, yeah, Pastor Cuke, you know, we have known Pastor Cuke and we are from upstate New York. And so we've had the privilege of ministering all over the New York area. Oh, God has taken us all around and even as far as Australia. You know, just to proclaim the goodness and the greatness of an almighty God. Amen. You know, um, God rescued us many, many years ago. And he pulled us out of the industries that we were in. And, um, and he just, like, he just gave us a better way, right? The best way, you know. And so our lives have, have not been the same since. And so we, we just go around and we just tell on the Lord. You know, so, um, Amen. so yeah, so we just want to just sing this song, You Deserve the Glory, right now. Amen. And then you can sing right along with us if you know it. A simple song. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. Because you are great. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands. We lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory. And the honor we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you like you there, there is, is no one else like, like you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you no one else like you there is no one else like you There is no one else like you. Ooh, 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 
Everybody sing. You deserve the glory and the honor and the honor. We lift our hands in worship. We lift our hands in worship. As we praise your holy name. As we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. And the honor. And the honor. We lift our hands in worship. We lift our hands in worship. As we praise. As, As we, we praise, praise your Lord, holy name, for you are, for you are great. great. You, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like, like you. you. No one else like you. There, there is no one else like you, you. for you, you are great. great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There's no one else like you. There is no one else like you. There is no one like you. Sister Pride, thank you for the invitation to come and sing, amen, and minister today. Thank you. When, when I 
am alone Give me Jesus Jesus Sing with us. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can now all this world. Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. with me you know I can, I can I can shut shop down thank you my brother my, <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> you know that song you know I sing it all the time at the ministry when they hear me singing that song they know something's really happening in this heart of mine give me Jesus that's all right that's all right Nothing like music for the soul. We have another word of prayer, so we won't hold you back here. So, Pastor Oles, always give the Sunday-law update, but I'm going to give you some health update to prepare you for the Sunday-law. <laughs> what do you think about that, huh? Amen. I'm going to have a word of prayer. You can bow your heads. I'm just going to kneel just for a moment. Oh, gracious Father in heaven, as those songs reverberate from the hearts, and what we need in anything is give us Jesus. And I pray, Lord, as we go through this talk, that Christ will be lifted up, and he will draw all men and women to himself. So grace us with your presence now. We pray in only one name, whereby men and women can be saved. That's Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. We want to go through some basic things with you. We got some handouts after, 
after this here so you can have some information in your hands. And also, we'd like to give you something to take away in your stomach also. All right? Give me Jesus. All right, we're going to go to the screen here and see. Uh, projector is off. My, my mic is not on. I put it on, on. And what about the, uh, it's on. Where's my IT folk? Oh, yeah. I had my friend there. He, he was not uh, too kosher on how to put this ear on. <laughs> my friend back there. So fix me up here, Abraham. Uh, what, what about the ear? Is this thing on right there? Are you sure? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? All right. It's good. Dennis, can we get it on the screen? All right. Let's see here. Give me Jesus. That's all right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay. You hold me up, we, we have to get another song, man. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the purpose of this thing, slowing up, huh? All right, I'll give, give you two minutes. Huh? I'm going to count down. Should we get another song while you're booting this up? Huh? All right, come on, sit there. Where's my family? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Pharaoh is, let my people go. <laughs> Pharaoh is, tell her, let her go so they come sing another song real quick. <laughs> oh, you got a song too? You, can you join the piano, huh? Jesus loves me. Amen. Come on, come on. You sure? Because they're not cooperating with me here. <laughs> Music is therapy. There you go. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. You didn't come on. At least you get three songs. That's good. Is that all right? <laughs> That's good. And I cut my presentation short, so you go ahead. No, 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 no. It's therapy. People, people need COVID-19 singing. Go ahead, do your thing. You see, one minute of anger suppresses your immune system for six hours. Six hours. And one minute of healthy laughter improves it for 24 hours. That's, so that's why, happy man, every time you smile and laugh, you just boost up your immune system. That's part of the COVID-19 program. Come on, talk to me, huh? Remember that one minute, every time you get angry at somebody, you suppress your immune system. Huh? That's right. Six hours. Angry. Hmm? Yeah. This one did everybody, everybody can sing along. All right, we got to... Saved a wretch 
like me I once was lost but now I'm found once blind but now I see let's sing the second verse twas grace that taught my heart yes church to feel and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believe my chains are gone my chains are gone Unending love, unending love, amazing grace, amazing grace. His grace is amazing, isn't it? Thank you, Lord. The Lord has promised. Let his promise continue. The Lord. Has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secure. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains, my chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my God, my Savior has ransomed me. Like a flood, and like a flood, His mercy. Unending love, amazing grace. grace. I always say that I'm, I'm in God's race at his pace because in the past I was moving too fast. So he has to allow things to happen to get our attention. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Let's go to the word. We, what we're going to talk about before we get into the, uh, the benefit of pine needles. Um, maximizing the immune system. But let's go through some fundamentals with you first of all and see what God has to say to us. Do you have your medical books? Yes, Not your phones. <laughs> Hold them up. Let me see now. All right. Okay. Okay. 
because satellite will be cut off. The greatest medical book ever been written. Huh? Let's read this text together from Psalms 100 verse 3. If you see it, let's read it together. What does it say? Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of this pasture. So without, you know, taking all your precious time, I have a lot of questions I use to give. But this scripture tells us emphatically that God owns us by creation and by design. Keep that in mind. He owns us. So he's given us an owner's manual. And that's the word of God, the Bible. He created this product. He did not leave it to operate by itself. He gave instruction. You ever try to, you know, when you buy like a table or something of this nature, you got all the pictures and all the screws, you know, all the lines. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just want to put it together. I can't go through all of that stuff. And then I end up, there's a few screws I got left over, <laughs> but the table is up. You ever done that? <laughs> when everything else fell, read the owner's manual. Read the manual because every product comes with a manufacturer owner's manual. And God has given us some instruction. We, now, in the book called Constant Dines and Food, page 17, paragraph 3, it says, It is as truly a sin to violate the laws of our being as it is to break the Ten Commandments. That's because the moral law and the physical law, they have the same author. You get that? The law that was written on the table stone is written on every nerve, every fiber in our body. We can understand the plan of salvation just looking at the very body, the skeletal system. You know, your brain, you know, it has up here where God talked about that frontal lobe where you want to put the seal. There's a bone called the spinard bone, spinard bone, like a Turkish saddle. And it's like covering cherubims and in the spin out bone the orbit of the brain sits right there are you listening to me no you're not in that orbit that Turkish ship like angel wings and that brain sits right there like the covering cherubim are you listening to me because here's where God want to put his name are you with me you can do an operational surgery procedure, cut that spinal cord in place, and you see it is shaped like angels. Communication. I can go on and on. Every fiber, every nerve is written with the hand of God, his love. And you know, there was a gentleman in this movement many, many, many years ago, a very brilliant man, inventor. His name was John Harvey Kellogg. Brilliant man, Battle Creek. And it's written that when this man go into the operational room, you can see angels guiding his hand as he operated on the floor. Now, that's the type of, if I had to go on surgery, that's the type of doctor, Pastor Q, I like to be under, brothers, that angels are guiding this man's hands. God is the author of the body as well as that moral. It goes on, it says here, now, we, we, we have a plan. We call it God's plan. There's many acronyms, New Start, etc., and there's nothing wrong with that. But when I read this from, it says in Exodus 15, 26, it's talking about, now God said, the basis of health is this. God said, if you diligently hearken unto my voice, is that what he says? And we'll do that which is right in my sight, and give ear to my commandments, and keep all my statutes, etc. You see that? Three things. Listen make a choice, and do, then God promised, I will put none of the diseases upon you that I put where? And when you go, we don't have time, you go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, start with verse 15, and then you keep reading, you see all the diseases of the Egyptians in that chapter. And you can translate those terminologies into modern physiological terms. You see, every disease that we suffer with today is found in Deuteronomy 28. So therefore, since the laws of nature are the laws of God, it is plainly our duty to give these laws careful study. Most of the time we spend truly a kind of imbalanced on this situation. We need to study the very moral law, and we need to study the laws that govern this human frame. Because 
We need health to go through this whole scenario of the coming crisis. And health is a sacred trust. This is what it says. We should study the requirements in regard to our own bodies and conform to them. God said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Ignorance in these things is sin. So therefore, all of God's people should be educated, and therefore, we hold the leaders of the church to educate everyone, and everyone needs to take personal responsibility of finding out the truth for themselves. And now, those who are part of this remnant church, we have no excuse because volumes of books from inspiration is written. So the basis of help. And this is how we came up with the acronym of God's plan. Notice what it says. Can you read that with me? What it says. If... If they follow God's plan. So that, those two words had eight, eight letters to it. And so as, as we studied years and years ago all the acronyms, we recognized nutrition was always at the top of a lot of those and godly trust was at the bottom. <clears throat> so it was no surprise, it was not no concoction of any man, it was inspiration that G stand for godly trust. On godly trust hang all the other laws. Oh. Those who are informed with inspiration, there's a book called 5T Testimony, page 441. It says, nine tenth, nine tenth of all diseases of a spiritual nature, the mental, the mind. Nine tenth. Nine tenth, that's 90% of diseases right here. This is why in our health center, we have begun to realize that when they come there for the physical therapy, etc., that the body cannot completely restore itself until there's a healing of the mind. We emphasize, amen, mind cure. We emphasize that. Now you say, how can nine tenth of mental cause diabetes? When your body is bombarded with stressors of life, affects the brain, the brain turbocharged hormones through the blood vessel down to the adrenal glands and begin to stimulate the adrenal gland to produce cortisol, adrenaline. In that, it suppresses the immune system. In that, inhibits the production of insulin. You ain't hear what I'm saying. People come, now, you're going to see something here. People say, well, what can I take to get well? When they call me, I said, well, you... Do you want to know what caused your problem? Or you want to escape from taking drugs? See, drugs is not the problem. I want to be well, that's the point. We'll see as we go on. So therefore, we find God's plan. God's plan. G-O-D-S-P-L-O-A-N. God's plan. That's where we get God's plan for People say, well, I see you got God's plan, I I said, sure. But this was not concocted by human beings. It was an inspiration, God's plan. And those laws are found in the book of Genesis. They didn't happen in the 21st century. They changed not. Are you with me? You see it all up there. And the Bible says in Psalms 119, 73, Thy hands have fashioned me and made me. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy commandments. So the most important thing is gain understanding of these principles in a practical way and how to apply them. God's plan. God's plan. Now, as you're taking pictures, I, I do have, I didn't bring, but you can go on our website and you can download this. It's called God's Plan RX. Mm. I hope this is my wife hair. <laughs> Is this your hair late? The one sitting next to you. <laughs> I kind of embrace you. Did I, did I, did I embrace? We, we, got, we got to check that DNA. <laughs> so you can go on our website and you can download a free copy. It's called God's Plan RX. Nice little package with those eight laws. Now, God's Plan. God's Plan. Now, when two president, two president back from Trump, Biden, you had another president. What was his name? Obama. Obama. 
and he came up with a wonderful health care program. What was it called? Obamacare. 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 So God has the best health care program. It's affordable. You, it's affordable. And you can have preconditions. The only qualification you need is just be a child of God. Dividends are paid for. Huh? They're paid for. These are the very means by which it is called a Bible care. Are y'all with me here? It's a Bible care, affordable health care plan. Let me, let me show what it looked like. Let me find my book here. You, you, need, your ins, you need your insurance policy. Affordable health care plan. No matter what they do, they cannot repeal this. They cannot get rid of it because it is eternity. It's freighted with eternity. Now, I got my old copy here, but this is it right here. Just go to the website, download RX, God's plan. It's been around since I've been around. <laughs> and it has everything in it. It gets you started. Even you can share with your neighbor. They say, well, how can I get on this plan? And this is generic. Just give it to them. And they start the plan. That's your assurance, not insurance. Assurance. Assurance. Keep that in mind. Very important. Oh, Bible care. All right, living healthy without being wealthy. Hello out there. Now, this plan has been around the world, in the poorest countries, etc. Everywhere we go, people can afford this plan. Hmm? Affordable health plan. Abundant health. Now, we talk about Sunday law crisis, council health, page 506. Know what it says. As religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nations, those who stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. For their sake, now listen to this, for their sake, they should, while they have opportunities such as this, become intelligent in regard to what? Disease, causes, prevention, and cure. And those who do this will find a field of labor anywhere. There will be suffering ones, plenty of them, who will need help, not only among those of our own faith, but larger among those who know not the truth. When you know this, opportunities everywhere, huh? So what should you know? Can anybody tell me what's the first thing you should know? Disease. Huh? Cause it, prevention, and cure. That's what you should know. Now, the most profound definition of disease is found in that wonderful book, Ministry of Healing. It says, disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from the violation of the laws of health. Now, why does disease come? Somewhere, whether consciously or unconsciously. There has been law violated somewhere. You got that? Then we go on and we have examples of that. Coughing, <clears throat> sneezing, running nose, mucus being dis disposited, and fever. All the above are efforts of nature to relieve itself of condition that result from violating the nature's law. So now, question. Based on that definition, disease, a friend or a foe? You tell me that I got a sickness and you say that sickness is a friend. Why you say that's a friend? So the body is exerting some, what you call, vital force trying to correct itself. Here you got a cough. So therefore you go and get a cough suppressant. So that suppresses nature's effort. Would you say so? Uh, you have sneezing and runny nose, mucus being deposited. So you take an antihistamine. Hmm? Antihistamine. Fever, you don't want to put the fire out. You want to control the fire because the body's raising temperature to fight the foreign organism. We need to know how to cooperate with nature. So therefore, cold, the body's trying to expel the encumbrance of it. Coming out the front door, come out the back door, come out the side door, huh? So if you block, well, if you go back there, if you block the front door, it's going to come out the back door. Hello out there, huh? Those are signs that the body is trying to correct its problem. See, the, 
See, the name of diseases does not tell you the cause, it just tells you the location. Are you with me? The location. Something I suffered with many, many years ago, arthritic problem, bursitis, lumbago. Those just tell you the location. So disease is like what I call the toxemic tree. You find that the tree roots are in the soil. So the condition of the soil would determine the condition of the tree. Are you with me? If the soil does not have the right nutrients, the tree is not going to produce. So the soil to the body, the soil to the body, according to Leviticus 17 and 11, the life of the flesh is in the blood. If the blood is healthy, every cell in the body will be healthy. Are you with me? So if the blood is filled with toxic waste, therefore, all you see all these diseases on the limb. So our modern technique is to cut the limbs off. Cut them off, cut them off, cut them off. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work. Why? Because treating symptoms is like mopping a floor while the water continues to pour. Now, if I was a politician in this little 1700 population town called Ardmore, and I was running for mayor of this city, and I had, you had this problem, I heard about the sewage already, you had this water problem, this is what I would, my campaign would be based on this. I'm gonna build more mop factories. Now, now, now don't laugh now, cause you gotta get this. I'm gonna build more mop factories. And that way, I'm going to hire maybe, I can hire over two-thirds of the Ardmore population. I'm going to pay $20 an hour. I give you two weeks, the first six months vacation. I increase your pay 10% within a year. And therefore, maternity leave, a free medical care. And I will push this campaign because we got a problem. And I have the solution to the problem. And by building the mop factories, I can make more mops hire more people, pay them money, and keep the water up. I know you're shaking your head, because, but this, that's what's happening. We capitalize on the misfortune of others, and we run a nice campaign on it. The average person, they're talking about $20 an hour, two weeks vacation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You tell me they won't vote for me. They even go break other faults and make sure everything's running. You follow me? So what's the solution to that problem? That's right. So treating symptoms is like mopping the floor while the water continues to pour. Treating symptoms, that's what it is. The cure is in the cause. Can anybody explain that real quickly? You find the cause, get rid of the cause. You got the cure, that's right. You're all smart people now. All right, four things we should do in case of sickness come from that same book. It says, in case of sickness, number one, the cause should be ascertained. Number two, unhealthful conditions should be changed. Number three, wrong habits corrected. And number four, then nature is to be assisted in our effort to expel impurities and to reestablish right condition in the system. So when people call us and they have a health concern, they are not concerned about the cause they're not concerned about the condition that contributed to it. They're not concerned about habits. They want to get to the then. Now, what does that word then right here mean? Afterwards. That means after you find the cause, after you understand the condition you change, I mean, correct, and wrong habits, then. But most people want the then. They say, what herb can I take for my blood pressure problem? What herb, what, what this I can do? Don't go down that pathway. You had to follow God's protocol. I did that for a few years and I realized that was not God's method. The then is afterwards, so they need to be educated. This is what we do in this book here. We put the definition in it, show people how to understand their body. Four things, you find the cause, unhelpful conditions, you find the correct wrong habit, then you assist nature. Summary, ascertain the cause. Now, let's go back. Where do you go to find the cause? Where do you look for the cause? Now remember that the eight laws of health. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from the violation of the laws of health. So if we're going to find the cause, we've got to trace it back. All right. The Bible says the purpose of the law is to reveal the cause, sin. 
Did you get that? The law reveals sin. So the eight laws of health reveals what contribute to our sickness. We, we're not born per se with sickness. We are born with the predisposition that we inherit the weakness of the constitution from the parents, etc. Which they were living up to all they know. You know, I say people spend the first 40 years of their life spending their health to gain wealth. And the next 40 years of their life spending their wealth to regain their health. And I know my folks work to the bones on the they were hard-working folks. They lived hard work. They, especially in the South, they ate the fat back and, and all that kind of stuff. And you wonder why they lived to be 60. Because they was outdoors picking cotton, chopping wood. Are you following me? You start eating fat back and where y'all sit and be on the computer and stuff like that. You'd be dead in two days. Hello out there, huh? Does that make sense to one person in here? They were very active people. Find the cause. Then look at the conditions that surround the conditions of the environment that you and I live in, sleep in, play in, work in. That's the environment. This is like people trying to get out of the city, which I agree. The city itself, is, it, you find buildings taking the place of trees. We find there's no negative ions there, the breathing, the small. So you got to deal with your environment. Correct wrong habits, that's your lifestyle. Sleep, exercise, what you wear, etc. Then you assist nature. That's where you get your, your urge, your massage, your hydrotherapy. You understand that? Yes. Simple plan, simple plan there. All right, we find them. With that in mind, so God, so we're going to go to the then. <laughs> we're going to go to the then. Now, I've done meetings on COVID-19, et cetera, and I got a handout I'm going to give you, my associate, it says, God's plan, the best defense against infectious disease, COVID-19. COVID now, I use one of the laws of, 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 of that God's plan that is so vital in dealing with COVID-19. One of the eight laws of health, I emphasize. Which one? All of them are important. Godly trust. Because COVID-19 creates fear. Fear. Now remember, when you are under fear, a distressful situation, it suppresses your immune system. Now we're not putting aside all these laws, but that mental condition is so important as we work with those in that situation. So I go through an explanation of that, and then I share with you uh, about this, how to support your immune system. That's one handout we give you. Then I have another handout. It's called God's Vaccines. God's Vaccines. Now, God's Vaccine, I spell it out for you here. Those are dealing with the eight laws of health. God's Vaccine, V, vital trust. A, always temperate. C, clean water. C, correct breathing. I, invaluable rest. N, nourishing food. E, exercise. S, sunshine. Did y'all hear that? That's God's vaccine, all right? So you get a copy of that. So let me share with you how we make this concoction here. Pine needle. Pine needle. Let's go to it see for a moment. Natural remedies. Now we do, also we have a book we put together called God's Pharmacy. You can access that also from our store on the web. God's Pharmacy, God put man in a garden in the beginning, right? God's Pharmacy, spelled with an F, not P-H-F-A-R-M-A-C-Y, all right? Keep that in mind, God's Pharmacy. This is our farm, farm years ago, but now it's Old change complexion. Hippocrates said, let that food be that medicine and let that medicine be thy food. Important. So Ezekiel 47, 12, food is your best medicine. Uh, I don't see my friend here. They are Brother Grimes and his family. They do a lot of foraging and do a wonderful job in sharing food in the forest. And he's telling me about a plant called 
garlic mustard, which is good. It helps to remove plaque. And I said, brother, I said, is that a, you tell me that's a cure-all for all things. He didn't say that. But if there was a plant, it was a plant that can cure disease. To your little knowledge, what do you think that plant would be? Your little knowledge. Any plant you think of. If there was a plant that can, that can cure all disease. Garlic, garlic is fantastic. Greens are fantastic. High in phytochemical, chlor, chlorophyllic. Cauliflower. cauliflower. You, 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 who said something? Ginger. Ginger is very good. Good for the digestion. Good for circulation. Turmeric. Oh, turmeric. Inflammatory condition. Good for the heart. Huh? Comf- comfort. B12. Good for your garden. I said one plant. Golden seal. Ah, golden seal. Ew. Very powerful. Ah, very powerful. It grows. Huh? Down the line, grows deep in the ground. Com- I said comfrey. Oh, time out. Time out. No, not funny. It's aloe vera. Now, there's seven continents on this earth. Now, I've been to five of those. Only continent I've not been on is the North Pole and the South Pole. <laughs> the polar bears and the penguins. <laughs> but everywhere I go, my first encounter with aloe vera when I dealt with AIDS. And I find when I was there in this particular country, it was South America and a few other places. Because there's many varieties of aloe vera. And uh, I don't think I have it on here. But aloe vera, if it was a plant that can cure diseases, it would be aloe vera. I don't think I have it there. But anyway, aloe vera is hot. The phytochemicals mean plant. Chemical means substance. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Now, when we talk about chlorophyll, and we, we compare the hemoglobin, that's the red blood cell, and to the chlorophyll molecule, you find that here, the hemoglobin of the iron, the center is iron. And the chlorophyll uh, here is magnesium. So they used to use chlorophyll for blood transfusion before it came to where we are today. And, and aloe vera contained all these wonderful properties, all these properties, green plants, but the fact is, I, I don't think I, I put it on the screen, but I'm going to show you some aloe vera. Anybody have aloe vera in their house? No, you should. Let me, for a moment, because we, this would not be a long presentation here. But let me uh, share with you. Now, there's a male and female aloe vera plant. Now, can you tell, anybody know the difference between the male and female? No. Yeah. I hear somebody, what'd you say there? I have one bigger than the other, but I got the same size. I don't think I have my aloe vera, okay. So it's not, I don't have it on here, that's all right. But the difference is, and I had to learn this from my wife, because she got plants, and house and got aloe vera and I noticed we had two types of aloe vera and uh, no I got on my other screen and I noticed that one of them one of the pots had these strong sturdy aloe vera leaf and the other one had little little aloe vera I said, now, what's the difference? Is this a different species? No, that's the female. Female is prolific. Oh, really? okay. Female that has a lot of, they grow a lot of these seeds. Okay. A lot small. They're prolific. They, they really, uh, they need some reproduction, uh, anti-reproduction. <laughs> I'll just, <laughs> see, I just, I just boosted up your immune system again for another 24 hours. So aloe vera, the male, is very sturdy, very sturdy. So I didn't have that information. So we're going to move forward so I can show you how to make this pine. But Jesus gave us an example what herbs are in Matthew chapter 13, verse 31, 32. He says, another parable put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is at least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, 
and become a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branch thereof. So we find plants as well as trees can be classified as herbs. This is why you got the pine tree. You got, you know, you, you, you have uh, peach trees. You have herbs. So when we talk about herbs, we're not just talking about little plants. Trees are herbs. You find peach trees are good for hormonal problems. I can go on and on and on. So Christ gives us a very good example of that. So purpose of herb, culinary, as you know, seasoning, nutritional, medicinal, phytochemicals. That's the purpose of it. You know, you got... Uh, uh, like I said, turmeric, and you got rosemary, because I got some rosemary in that jar there. You see what I'm saying? You have here. Now, in a wonderful book, manuscript, released 31, 1911, it is no denial of faith to use rational remedies judiciously. What does that word judiciously mean? With judgment, wisely, huh? It says, water, air, sunshine, these are God's healing agency. The use of certain herbs that the Lord has made to grow for the good of man is in harmony with the exercise of faith. Now, here Thomas Edison, seemed like he almost said the same thing. Thomas Edison said, a famous scientist, is talking about him, once said, until man duplicates a blade of grass, Nature can laugh at his so-called scientific knowledge. Remedies from chemicals will never stand in favor compared with the products of the nature. The living cell of the plant, the final results of the rays of the sun. When what? Correctly used. That's that word correctly or wisely or judiciously. When correctly used, herbs, what do herbs do? They promote the elimination of waste matter and poison from the system, simple natural means. Keep that in mind. They support nature in its fight against the disease, while chemicals not being assembled add to the accumulation of morbid matter, that should be R on that, and only simulate improvement, only mimic. Now notice what herbs do. Herbs do not cure diseases. God has put the law within the very nature of man Nature will bring about preservation if we cooperate with him. So don't let nobody come to you and say, I got a product that can cure your disease. It would definitely support your body, but therefore, if there's an herb that cures diseases, then we throw away the law. Hello out there. Now you try it. We saw that. So nature needs cooperation. 74% of 119 plants derive pharmaceuticals. Basically, that's where we all, that's where we get primary, all of our pharmaceutical medicine from plants. Digitalis, you know, aspirin, white willow, you go on and on, they came from plants, but not today. They're more synthesized or synthetic today. So we find today 25% of all prescription drugs are still derived. I remember we were conducting a school in Germany and I was doing a natural remedy program, and I needed some products, so I went to the pharmacist. And the pharmacy understood quite well what I was talking about. You know, he didn't say, well, you need to check with your doctor. He said, yeah, I, I, we got it right here, because 25% of prescription drugs are still used, especially in Germany. Now, this has been years ago. We find the pharmaceutical companies have an impact around the world, because pharmacy, I'm not knocking drugs. There's a place for drugs. Are you with me? There's a place for it. But we do not want to think that the drug in itself is going to heal you. You know, if I get in a car accident right. and I'm bleeding, you call the ambulance, take me to the hospital. Yeah. If they got to operate me, put me under. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's wisdom. So I'm not here to knock that, but I'm saying that drugs do not cure disease. It definitely will intervene, give you some time. Now, you can have a surgical procedure like we did with a lot of people with cancer. And when those folks have cancer, if they get on a plan or they get surgical procedures. As one person came to our center, fourth stage of prostate cancer. I'm going to show you how God's plan worked. Fourth stage was not of the Advent faith. Uh, his wife had died years ago and remarried. And as I counseled with him, talked with him, I found out he was holding on to anger. I think someone was 
sharing that somewhere online. He was angry at God because his wife died. Holding on to the anger. Anger. And so after a week into the program, after going through the therapy, most of all going through the mental consultation, and you can get his testimony on our YouTube. He said, I thank God for cancer. You ever heard anybody tell you to thank God for cancer? I can tell you more okay. He said, I thank God for cancer. Because it was because of cancer I realized how bitter and angry I was. And that man surrendered his life to Jesus. Are you following me? It's very important to understand that. And so he had operation, et cetera, et cetera, before he came, but he found the true healing because he was in a state of mental depression, declining. Why herbal medicine? Little to no dependence. Now, that cannabis stuff y'all taking, cannabis. Oh. Will y'all sleep or y'all just ignore me? <laughs> we, 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 now, see, you're not listening to me then. <laughs> Cannabis? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Well, now they have said that, they said it, the cannabis, one of the famous doctors on TV said, you know, they, it doesn't have the toxic stuff. Yeah, you know, THC. Yeah, THC. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> now, you know, God said the evil going to be spoken as good. Now, you know, I'd be 75 in, in several months here, and I know I grew up in Chicago, and I knew those guys that carry a little ounce of that stuff, they're going to jail. Yeah. Hello now. They, they, they don't go to a doctor to get no prescription for that. You ain't listening to what I'm saying. We live in the last days. Now, how can something that toxic is now is okay? And when people have gone to jail, now they need to let, air, the, the, the guys are old now. They need to, they need to make restitution. That's right. That's right. What do you, what you think about it, Pastor? Yeah. Everybody you threw in jail in the 60s who are now my age, pay them a bunch of money. CBD. Anyway, how did I get on that? What? That's not my presentation. <laughs> I know how I got there. <laughs> You're right, sir. No prescription to get out there and, and to pick some dandelion. You need an RX for dandelion. What about poke salad, poke root? Now, those folks were born in the South. You know what poke root is? You could poke salad. One of my cases, I think I was in Jamaica. You know, some, what did you say? What, what, what did he say? He said what? Oh, oh, have mercy. In West Virginia, poke root, huh? Woo. Well, it's not, I'm telling you, it don't taste like spinach. You got to know what you're doing. Catch it before the berries, you know what I'm saying? But that's one of the most, because of the alkaloids, it's one of the most powerful herbs that will support the immune system. Dealing with HIV, full-blown AIDS. That garlic and aloe vera is what I use for AIDS. And it grows. Now, once you get the berries on it, you leave it alone. It needs before the berries. It can grow six, seven feet tall. It grows wild. Poke salad. And he said spinach, man. I don't compare that with no spinach, man. Is that your husband? Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Is that your husband? <laughs> He's still living. Huh? That's all right. So pokes at it. So therefore, you find you don't need no prescription. And you find that um, in Arizona, California, there was a plant, man, they start burning the plant up because it was becoming very widely used in dealing with cancer. Huh? No. Not yucca. It'll come to me. Now... Nah, it's all right. Drink some water. Bible example to use. All right, Jesus used clay. Hello out there. Clay. 
on the eyes we use clay clay baths in order to draw toxins increase circulation also you remember the fig leaf poultice fig trees putting the poultice um, drawing out inflammation even on for breast inflammation on the breast and Timothy said drink a little wine for your stomach this is where a lot of preachers get to it see <laughs> you know what I said preachers they said you see the Bible said drink a little wine you know, I had to build on that. So you got to go to, I don't know if I got it here, but anyway, you got to go to the book of Psalms. You got you to put line upon line. And it's the juice in the vine, grape juice. Hi. We find galactic acid, grape juice, good for the blood, good also to deal with inflammation. Grape juice, not grape wine juice. All right, let's come on down here. Pine needle tea as we close out. Notice what it says, Minister of Healing 264. There are living, life-giving properties in the balsam of the pine, in the fragrance of the cedar and fir, especially the cedar berries. Cedar berries are good for diabetes, good for the body to help stimulate the production of insulin, but pine needle. Now, where we stay, our place is loaded with hardwood and pine. So these pine needles come from the property where we are. Now, benefits of pine needle tea may include maximizing the immune system, improving vision, preventing respiratory infections, stimulating circulation, avoiding chronic disease, increasing cognitive performance, strengthening the heart health, and speeding healing. With more than 100 varieties of pine trees in North America alone, you must use the correct pine needles as some varieties may be toxin, toxin or cause negative side effects. So we talk about mainly the white pine, white pine, keep that in mind. These come from white pine here. White pine trees, you can notice some got short leaves, but white pine, white pine. is rich in vitamin C, five times the concentration of vitamin C found in lemons. Can bring relief, conditions such as heart disease, varicose veins, skin complaints, fatigue, Vitamin C is also an immune system booster, which means that pine needle can help to fight illness infections. They also contain vitamin A for the eyes, antioxidant, good for cancer. Pine. What is pine needle tea? Pine needle tea has been considered an important medicinal tool for indigenous cultures for thousands of years. While former research is somewhat limited on the subject, the anecdotal evidence of its beneficial is undeniable. Pine trees are native to the northern hemisphere but are now found across the world. From cold to subtropical region, pine needles tea is consumed in the United States and many Asian cultures. How to choose pine needles for tea? It's usually made with the fresh leaves of the pine tree. You can also buy pre-packed pine needles for a quick brew. So why should I go to a store and buy a pine needle tree? When and we got property filled with pine needles, huh? Making pine needle tea is easy and only requires fresh young pine needles. Okay, we go on and on in that. So, so we look at a few trees. We got down here, there are also quite a few trees that are commonly called pine trees, but are in fact toxic imitators, such as the English yew, Norfolk Island pine, and the yew pine. Those are not what we want to use. These should never be used to brew pine needle tea. Experts recommending use eastern white pine and notable fir as a safe to drink. And that's what this is right here. Make sure pine needles have a vibrant green color. Avoid yellow or brown ones. Fresh pine needles are more flexible than older ones and are preferable for tea. When they turn totally brown, you do not use them. And the health benefits, we shared that and may augment vision, all these are benefits. Even in weight loss, we find health, mind, mental. Side effect, there are, wi there are a widely variety of pine trees. Some of these are potentially toxic, as we said. According to the US Department of Agriculture Research Service, the needles of ponderosa pine may cause abortion when grazed by cattle. With very little research available, most of the side effects of pine needle tea are also anecdotal. Some of these, irritation of the throat, inflamed patches of skin, vomiting, nausea, dizziness, headaches, diarrhea. When I use pine needle tree tea, 
I never find any of those side effects. And especially when COVID hit, we bombarded our folks with pine needles. And therefore, for pregnant women, we do not want to use anything that's toxic. It goes on. Allergies. All right. Now, this is how this is made. We have two recipes to give you. This is the simple one. You, 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 you take one cup of filtered water, you know, pure water. You get a handful of, you know, you get some pine, such as this here. Huh? Is this on your handout? I, I don't think that's on the handout. Just take a picture and, and just donate into my bucket back there for my pictures. <laughs> I'm going to put copyright on this stuff. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, how can I put a copyright on this stuff and then... And, and, and it came from somebody else. It came from God. How can you copyright? You know, you all just like somebody. I know. This person saw uh, God's plan on our website. I showed you that. God's plan. And the guy had really the unsanctified gall said, we're going to sue me ministry for, for using an acronym God's plan. I didn't get angry. I felt sorry for him because he can really get killed. Because God's plan came from God. So I just typed the young man. I, said, type. I didn't know. He was a young man. I said, type. I said sir, I said, you have the right to sue. But I'm going to let you know you're not suing me. Now, especially if you're Adventist Christian. Let me show you where this comes from. Now, you take it up with my creator. You know what happened? He disappeared. <laughs> So, God, anybody can use it. God's plan. It's free. All right. So you just take this and you know, you, then you get scissors and you cut it up in little chunks. All right. Now, you take, to make a cup of this, one cup of filter water, a handful of pine needle tea, begin with a collective purchase tea, et cetera, et cetera. Cut off the brown ends, one inch. Bring pot of water to boil. Then add in the freshly cut pine. So if you're going to boil four cups of water, four cups of pine. You understand that? Hmm? You boil it. Boil it. Because that's what you call a decoction. Bring it to a boil. Cover the pot with a lid. Allow the needles to steep for three to four minutes. Remove the, uh, remove the pot from the heat. But keep it covered and allow it to continue. Once all the needles have sunk to the bottom and the tea is cool, pour through a strainer into a cup and enjoy it. Now that's the regular pine. Now I made a concentrated pine. Concentrated. It's a little more potent than just regular pine. Pine needle herbal concentrate. Now this is the concentrate. Water, pine needles, oregano, thyme, rosemary, and a little honey. Yeah, that sounds good. But sometimes you get too heavy with the oregano, and I tell you, it will definitely, it, not only burn, it will flush you out. So, so this here is the concentrate pine. It got the oregano and all. So when we finish, when you go out, my fellow workers going to pour just a little bit, and you taste it and see what you think. Now, don't, don't dump it. Savor it. Savor it. All right. So, any closing questions? Question: How you gonna savor it? Eastern. Eastern. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. You can probably access our presentation called <clears throat> True and False Method of Healing. And I want to talk about Eastern Mel Medicine. They are based on a, a principle, what they call chakra. C H A K R A. Chakra. That's dealing with the whole energy flow, controlling energy. That's what acupuncture do. 
uh, reflexology does that. And what it does, it affects every nerve in your body to the point it affects the brain. So those are what you call Eastern medicine, those type of concepts. If it doesn't fit, must have quit. If it don't fit to the law, must get rid of it. So you can access that information. I think it's called true and false method of healing. Thank you for the question. So if thou would diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all this stature, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptian. Very important to understand that. So the basis of health is obedience. Job said in Job 26, 2, the cause I knew not. No, the curse causes should not come. In Job 29, 16, he said, the cause I knew not, I searched it out. Go to the word and search it out. Got a hand up. Got a mic? Okay. Where are you from? Yes, ma'am. Well, you'll find mostly in North America you have white pines, then you also have some new pine. They're very short. The very pine needles are not long like this. Most of your white pine have long needles like this. Okay? If they if they short and stubby, that's not white pine. Okay. Uh, Say it again, dear. That's interesting. I went to my yard and pulled this off, and uh, they got a whole lot of needles. <laughs> okay, I had to see. I had to see what that looks like, my dear. Yeah, because when they grow on a tree. It's not three to four or five. There's several on this. <laughs> yes, ma'am. If you don't have that on your property, where can you go to buy it or get it? That's a good question. Right here in the parking lot. Or come to meet ministry. I, I sell it to you. <laughs> Well, you know the. What, what did you ask, Michelle? What, well, the male is very sturdy. Yeah, yeah. You, the male, the male man. <laughs> The first step, the first step. ascertain the cause. Now, what if, uh, and I'm sure at some point in time, you examine the cause, and you, I guess you can come to a conclusion, maybe it's too late. Yeah, you know, what do you mean, too late? Yeah. Sometimes you come to a problem, or a person has come to a point. I guess you can improve. You notice the Bible says that, uh, I think it's maybe backwards, it says, a living dog is better than a dead lion. So where there's life, there's hope. So it's never too late if there's life. You know what I'm saying? It said, though a tree be cut down, it will sprout again. So the only way you get rid of that tree, you got to get to the roots. If you get the roots out of it, it's going to die. Yeah. But that person got some life, it's not too late. Yeah. You know, it's not too late. Any other question before we go? Are you prepared? Yes, how do you prepare the aloe vera? Do you well, use the outer skin or just what, the inside? 
Well, it would be good for you to go get our book called God's Pharmacy. In that book, it tells you how to use aloe vera. But for your sake, <laughs> you know, I've used aloe vera for helping people with hemorrhoids. You know, aloe vera, you got thorns on it, right? Just cut a piece and just put it in the rectum. What do you think about that? No, no, I'm going to come down. Right now, they got a little. But what conclusion did I come to? <laughs> you have a bloody problem. Huh? So he has more problems if you don't cut but, them thorns yeah, off. You, you, <laughs> you take the thorns and the skin, and you just get the fat in there, yeah. put it in there. But... <laughs> Now, we make, in our book also, we make a cancer drink from aloe vera. So we, de we, de we take the thorns off, but we leave the skins on. And we juice it, along with other things. Yeah, you just take the thorns off and juice it, because there's property even within the skin. Now, to eat, you take the thorns off, you can eat the skin, but you can also scoop the very substance out of the plant. Gel. Yeah. Isn't, isn't the, the green part, doesn't it have a very laxative effect? All of it has a laxative, but the green part definitely has a laxative effect. Hold on. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, since we're doing this, what is the... How do I phrase this? Kind of personal, my thing. Like... The problem I have is I was overweight, so I've lost all the weight kind of mm -hmm. thing. Well, how much I, you weigh? You I used to weigh 300 pounds. Wow. How long, how long did it take you to lose that? Five, six years. About five or six years. Okay. I mean, it, it's, it, you know, Kept it off, huh? Been keeping it off. I just realized that I needed to listen to the Lord. You need to what? Lose Lis more? Listen to the Lord. Oh, okay. I, thought you said I, I still need to lose more, actually. No, you all right, man. No, I, I needed to lose okay. a little bit more. Just, okay, But ahead. because of that... Um, and other things of past of eating habits besides, um, I wore out my hips. Mm. So I have no, I have no cartilage no on my cartilage. hips. No cartilage, I can understand that. So is that something that because of the time period of youth mm. and now, mm. is it something that now I have to just wait until the Lord gives me a new body? <laughs> which, which, if that's the answer, again, if you, the, if you the live thorn, with that, yeah. If the thorn, if the thorn in yeah, the side yeah, keeps yeah. me to realize, because there's times that I have to go. Do I really want to go back? Yeah. Oh wait a minute. No, I don't. All right. Um, or is it something that we are to take the counsels of? There are going to be certain times for surgery. That's true too, and at the same time, as you contemplate that, there's th still things you need to consider in your eating program, lifestyle program for that bone and cartilage situation. And therefore, yes, there might be a time where you might have to have surgery procedure, which is a very prayerful situation. Yeah. My, yeah. my question, uh, my question um, do you have any material or books on herbs that are okay or acceptable to consume while you're pregnant or breastfeeding? Yes. Um, and then specifically bitters, like what bitters are okay bitters. while breastfeeding, breastfeeding? Yeah, if you access that book, what we call God's Pharmacy, which we deal mainly with foods, et cetera, will help you with that case because you want to be very careful when you take certain herbs, especially even bitter herbs are not, you know, recommended for a pregnancy, even for breastfeeding. And there are certain plants good for breastfeeding, but not all. But that book, God's Pharmacy, that we have. Yes, Wayne. Can you, speak, uh, can you pass that mic? Where's the mic? You getting your exercise, man? <laughs> man, you. Woo wee. Could you uh, give any principles as far as the treatment of dementia? Mm -hmm. Can it be treated? Is it reversible? And what can be done? Just some general principles. You mean a, a protocol? Protocol. Now. Did y'all hear the question with dementia? Because, uh, you know, did y'all hear, he said, what kind of protocol can be used for dementia? My sister, which is one, she made 100 years of age, 
uh, in May. It's, it's, it's on oh, March, I'm sorry, March. I must have dementia myself. <laughs> You're right, that's thinking, thinking. But anyway, uh, she made 100 years of age. There's only two of us left out of eight. She's 100. Uh, I'm the youngest, she's the oldest. Everybody else between. So she, diabetes, high blood pressure. And so anyway, we, we've had her for what, about nine months now? No medication at all, no medication. Just her life is coming. She's communicating cognitively, you know, she's not full. Now, before then, you know, she was staying with my other folks and therefore what they was feeding her, et cetera. Another thing, she was set every day in front of that idiot box. Every day, every day, every day, eating, every day, eating. No communication, no communication. I'm just giving you a protocol now. So first of all, the most important thing is the interaction, the cognitive. Not that you babysitting, okay, you change them, you set them there, put a TV in front of them, you go about your business. So we have an environment, communication, praying, reading to her, reading to her. I'm going to tell you, Frank, in nine months, less, her mind start kicking in. She's on a plant-based diet. Uh, she, she was hardly walking, now she's taking steps. She outside in the sunlight. I'm just telling we no herbs. There's no herbs. Just simple eight laws of health. But you got to communicate. You got you, you to gotta hold conversations with her. She sat there and watched that box. It's going to just continue to deteriorate those brain cells. That would be the most important thing in the water intake. Because when that brain, when, when there's dehydration, that creates inflammation. And so those are things we, we have given her. And I, I believe we might have a protocol, but you contact me on that. Yes. So I have a friend who, um, who has leukemia. And, um, of course, the doctor has given him the death sentence. Yeah. And he has accepted it, basically. <clears throat> However, he's getting chemotherapy. So how will chemotherapy? It's, yeah, and he still smokes. Hmm. So how, I know it's the situation, but anyway, um, could he still do chemotherapy in the aloe vera? I know the smoking is a, is a major problem. Oh, most it? definitely is. Yeah, and I spoke with him about that. Um, he says the doctor has given, they have made an agreement that because that is. What kind of agreement? That he can continue to smoke. That's his pleasure. That's his only pleasure. And he's, but if you look at him, he's, he's very, he looks very healthy. I mean, for the most part. He's not like, I told him. I said, so his doctor yeah. made a green with yeah. keep on smoking because that that's your pleasure. Okay. Yeah. That's what, that's what happens, right? So we're telling him, man, God has the last one. Yeah, because if you understand uh, cancer and the causative factor, you're talking about smoking. Is preventing, is creating the oxidation of the cells and et cetera, robbing the body of your B vitamins, your, your, your calcium, et cetera, but now it can't function like that and smoking. So, so your question to me is what? It's safer to <laughs> stop smoking. I mean, just, you know, can he do chemo and aloe vera? Because you say aloe vera helps with cancer? Yes. Uh -huh. But you see, chemotherapy has a devastating effect upon the immune system. Right. So it's like putting... Uh, clean clothes and dirty water, shooting yourself, yeah. It's best to wait till he finish chemotherapy. That's what we said to our, all our guests. They said, if you're going to take chemotherapy, you might as well just don't get on no herbs, but you can change your diet, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not, you know, that's a powerful chemical uh, solution in the body. So I was, if anything, I suggest them get on a clean diet, plant-based diet. I don't play with people with cancer. I said, look, all flesh food need to be eliminated. All dairy, all that need to be totally eliminated. And the doctor's not going to say that. But they're going to say, keep on smoking 
because all they saying is that you're going to die anyway. Like I said, the guy that was fourth stage prostate cancer, that's what they gave him a death sentence, but the guy's still living today. Hmm? He took radiation, chemotherapy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. So therefore, we find that heredity loads the gun, lifestyle pulls the trigger. Keep that in mind, lifestyle. Health is a choice and not a chance. So in Deuteronomy 30, 19, it said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. There's that choice again. There's that will again. Very important. Closing questions. So we do have, we got those handouts. We can get a handout for family. We said, if you don't have it, I leave a master copy here. Who, who, who can I trust with a master copy if you need some more? Kay. Where is she? All right, Kay. Give her both, give, give a set, just in case you need copy. So we have copies, because uh, I did 50, but two sets per family. If you need more, Kay will get some out. And therefore, when you walk through the door, you're going to taste pine needle tea. Now, this is the concentrate. It might be a little or potent. Yeah, it's potent. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. It's, it's, and that's because I think I put a little too much oregano, oregano in it. But I'm going to tell you, when I drink, when I, when I made this and drank this, boy, I tell you, boy, that stuff was coming out of me. Woo! So drink some water and take a little bit. Just drink. <laughs> but just remember the, the oregano. All right. We got a question here. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. This right here, three, take a cup three times a day. A cup three times a morning, afternoon, and evening. It's all right. But this is for, you use this just for maintenance? Well, right now in the COVID season here, I would say, you know, if you want to boost up your immune system, you don't have to stay on it for the rest of the year. I would say give yourself a good month of taking this, boosting up your system, as long as you're doing everything exercise. That's what I suggest. A cup three times a day. Yeah. No, it gonna detox you all right. <laughs> no, no, you you're not gonna detox on this. It's good though, but no, that's we there's a detox plan. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Say it, say it again. Yes. No, that's not in there. This, no. I'm sorry, Dave. This is a new kid on the block. All right, we're going to have to work on that. For I thought I had the recipe. What you do, you take, uh, take my email. You see the email? Question. I, did I hear somebody say they... Question. Did, did y'all get a picture of the recipe? Who got a picture of the recipe? Good picture. L look at these hands, dear. Okay. Thank you, dear. All right. Very good. Question, dog. Yes. Uh, you supposed to, wait a minute now. You supposed to have two, uh, one each. Okay. Like this. Can I see yours? You supposed to have God's vaccine and God's plan for the best defense. You got an extra one there? Yeah. Carol? It's, yes. It's this. Uh, portion good in building up the body against monkeypox. Monkey, <laughs> why you worry about monkeypox, man? It's, 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 it would, it would declare. Why are you laughing? In New York. Why, why are you laughing? Why? No, <laughs> why you? Why, why are you laughing? Cause I asked him that question. Why he's worried about it? Look, look at that lovely lady there. But see. I know it is. Which they, he know he know why he, he know why why monkey pops come from. He know why. So you think can this be used? Yes, it can be used. 
because it's a virus that's been transmitted to boost up the immune system, but it does not give license to continue on. You understand what I'm saying, preacher? Ascertain the cause. Because these kind of conditions is definitely God speaking to us. It, it's becoming more prevalent today. But to build up the immune system, yes. And in that book, do you have that God's pharmacy book? Then you got nature, you got nature's flu shot and nature's penicillin in that book. All good to boost up the immune system. Yeah. Most definitely sunshine. Very good. Did everybody get a copy? All right. The only thing it said is, is, the, is the size. The way I distinguish, okay, the way I distinguish is the needles in the tree. Yeah, the needles. We find the needles. White pine, white pine. Now, since you all live in the Google generation, come on, Google, Google it. So you get clear. Google it. Say, all right. How do you, how you determine what is white pine? Google it. Because y'all trust Google more than anybody else. Google it. <laughs> long needles, not short, because I've seen short you pine. Long needles. Is it white pine, white, or is that just the name of it? <laughs> White pine tree. Well, your husband, your husband, not use his glasses. <laughs> use his glasses. I mean, you. And then plus, it's very flexible. You can, and plus, you can chew on these. You can really chew on these. Chew on these. Huh? All right then. All right. So therefore. As we pray, just, just get a little bit, and uh, let me put a disclaimer around the world. I'm not responsible for anybody that's going to bump their head, trip <laughs> over, and, and puke up, and anything else. <laughs> no. But the only thing that a disclaimer, I think I put a little too much oregano. That's the only thing that I will be responsible for. It's all right. You're an artist, man? Yeah. Mm, that's pretty good, man. Mm. He wasn't paying attention to me at all, but he was going. Right. <laughs> that's how you Listen, look at that statue. Look at that. Look, look, at, look, at, look there, huh? Wow. Wow. I'm about to see you, man. <laughs> Show that statue. Designer. Okay. Okay, okay man. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, man. So anytime you get sick, you do something for me, come to our health center. I just charge you <laughs> one. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. You ain't listening to what I'm saying. Okay, go One percent. <laughs> all right, any questions or comments? We're we all good. All right. Yes, yes ma'am. So therefore, you just call the office, and we set it up. Then I'll send you a form. Send it back. Then I give you a conference-free number if it's, if it's not in person. Yes, indeed. We all do that. Well, we got a couple of us, and I know how folks are. They're very kind of personal. Yeah, we want you. It's just getting harder and harder to Okay. I'm, I'm going to raise up my price. <laughs> Diminish my clientele. <laughs> yeah. Do. Just say, says Michelle Q. <laughs> I'll respond to Michelle Q. <laughs> All right. I would wait, 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 wait. I know the voice. I know the voice. <laughs> Don't you? Just like you, uh, that singing voice. I would know it's not her. Not that Michelle can't sing. Uh, you go. <laughs> mm. I uh, I read again in Ellen White about not having too much spices or condiments. Mm. And then I read something very similar by Mrs. E.E. E. Kellogg where she mentions cinnamon and garlic yeah. in that list. Garlic. 
And so I'm just wondering, are cinnamon and garlic no-nos, or are they things that you can I have I wouldn't put garlic and cinnamon together, no. Cinnamon, yes, because there's a, there's a different thing you can use. I think cinnamon for cardamom, it was that cardamom, yeah. But cinnamon definitely is an irritant. Okay. So no Coriander, thank you, coriander. But garlic, no, I wouldn't put that in there. Okay, but no cinnamon. N cinnamon, yes, that is a stimulant, that's a spice. It's like, a black, like black pepper. Cetera, okay, yeah. and then my other question was that you said po I, I never heard of it. Po how do you spell Where it? Where you from? P O K E. I'm from Canada. You from Canada? No wonder you ain't heard from it. You know for the border, man. <laughs> po P O K E. Poke weed. It, it grows as tall as you, man. You get berries, like blackberries on it. You know, it, it would grow out here, whatever. I mean, it grows all over our property. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, because in Canada, I've been to Canada, but I've never seen it in Canada. It might grow up there. Yeah, poke weed. All right, then. Cinnamon? I heard that there are, what? with the cinnamon, there are two different... Um, types, the Ceylon or Ceylon, and then their cassia. I heard the cassia I know ca is the one that is you known to be a stimulant and is in, not good for the body, but the Ceylon or Ceylon is supposed to be... Spell that. C-E-Y-L-O-N. C-E-Y. C-E-Y-L-O-N. Huh. You, you lost me on that. Yeah, they're two different. I mean, so some people say that the, the, that one is supposed to be healthier. And what do they use it for, my dear? I mean, culinary, but also people use it for different reasons, because it's antiviral, anti-parasitic, anti-bacterial. Could you write that down, that word down for yes. me? Mm -hmm. I will investigate that. I cannot respond to it, because I never... This, he's not, this is not cinnamon. Two types of cinnamon. Two, oh, two types of cinnamon. Oh, two types of cinnamon. And you're saying the one what you said was different? Uh, I can't say that. You know, you got different, huh? Spell it for me. C E Y L O N. C E Y L O N. Yeah. Well, to me, when I'm in doubt, I do without. I don't use no cinnamon at all. There's, there's other natural things like a coriander. So I will say, especially if you're not sure with pregnant women, and et cetera, I will be very safe. And because, you know, you got to really search this thing out, what people say. It depends on where the comments come from because it all depends. It might be their way of, of selling stuff, etc. All right. I have a question. What about using nutmeg? Nutmeg. That's a, isn't that a stimulant? Is that a, yeah. Nutmeg is an irritant too. Okay. Yes, it is. What can you use in place of nutmeg? Cardamom. That's right. Cardamom. That's right. So, no, cardamom, my dear. You all right? You come in the right place at the right time. <laughs> All right, bro. We're going to have a word of prayer. So therefore, give you time before it get dark, just in case when you drink this, you need a designated driver. <laughs> I know, but I'm letting you out. No, I'm not going to keep talking, because I got I, I to gotta get back to my place. Yeah. But we had a good time. I appreciate, huh? Three hours. Yeah. It's not that far, three hours. I, I like to get home before dark. That's right, yeah. So we, I have something I want to show. Can, Dennis, before we close out, let me see here. I want to let you know what's going on real quickly here as we prepare. Since, <clears throat> let's turn this off here. There's a few things I'd like to inform you all with, if I can get this here. All right, let's see if this is going to work here. My IT man need to come and push this thing on here. He's coming. So anyway, we have a couple of things going on, and I'd like to encourage outside the camp meeting, we do have a marriage retreat. We have a men's retreat, and I would say all you men, not all, because we can't handle all of you guys, if anyone, but uh, you got it going. So anyway, then we're talking about 
So just push the button, right? Let's see a few things here. So, so this was going on at the ministry, which was about three hours from here. Some of you guys have been out there, but you have not been out there recently, so you need to come and see what has taken place so far. Because we went from 30 acres to 122 acres now, and therefore there have been some new developments. So we have a summer garden school coming up, August the 14th. That's, well, that's next week, almost week after next. Still not too late. That's the summer garden school. In time garden school. Then our camp meeting, which is coming up the end of this month. That's August the 31st, September the 3rd. We will set up another big tent outside. So at least we'll arrest all COVID-19 fears on our grounds with all the pine needles absorbing, et cetera, et cetera. Country fresh air. That's August. That's end of this month. This will be our 33rd camp meeting. 33rd. 33rd. Then marriage retreat. This would be probably our 12th marriage retreat coming up. And our October the 5th through the 9th, 2022, on our campus. Another event coming up. Men's retreat. We had our first women's retreat. The ladies did earlier this year. So we're going to, I usually go to men's retreat to those that really have a solid ground on that. So this year, men's retreat is entitled a man after God's own heart. And uh, so that's October the 23rd, right there on campus. These, you've got a handout on that men's retreat. Then we have our fall garden school. Fall, that's October the 30th to November the 6th, 2022. Fall garden schools. And we have what we call a media training program that that doesn't start to next year media as we train men and women to become use the media as a ministry and then our next year's school February 26th to June 25th that's a four month school of gospel health evangelism that on campus and so therefore we're taking all applications now then we have also a home study course, home study course that you cannot come, which we now is transferring that into an e-school online. But the four-month school is on campus. These are some of the events that's taking place there at Meat Ministry. So that's, and that's how you get in touch with us about these events. Any questions on anything that we have just said? Yes, sir. Yes, we do. Laverne Jackson, cash app. I think Dennis, we have many ways. I don't know if it's on there. Uh, donations. Dennis there? I don't know if he has it online. Ask Dennis, because I think we have a cash app. Do you use Zelle? The ministry, I think we use Zelle, yes. I'm not the IT man. Is Dennis available, Laverne, real quickly? Well, these folks said they get out at 7. I'm getting out of here before 7. <laughs> Dennis, do you hear me? But we get that information. Very important. Laverne Jackson, please. He working on it? He going to put it up? Oh, so he going to put it up. Why he, he going to put it up? How you can donate to the ministry if you want to. It should be, yes. It's on the website. Most, yeah, yeah, people are watching. Any closing questions, comments? Yeah. Do you, do you, uh, do you, do you give or do you uh, work with someone who gives the, the natural doctor program, anything like that? Do what? Do you have, do you work with any program that gives like a natural doctorate degree? Oh. Doctorate degree. Um, no, we give them a certificate of being a lifestyle educator. See, one thing you realize that uh, people are concerned with titles. Mm. And if you are trained and qualified, you know, I think it's Proverbs 18, your gift will make room for you. 
And so we have some of our later students who don't have no doctor degrees. And they got work going on all over the world. And, it's, and the most important thing within this world of the medical practitioner, you're not competing with the medical community. Because so there's a place for the medical community. You get what I'm saying? And number one, you don't treat diseases. We educate people how to preserve their health. You get what I'm saying? Then you don't make claims that this is going to cure your disease. I never made claims on that. I asked a person, I said, do you want to be well? And when people come on their drugs, we don't say, well, you need to get off your drugs. I said, drugs are not your problem. Because all they want to get off drugs. Drugs is not your problem. It's your health is a problem. You understand? So we have to be educated. So get a certificate of completion, lifestyle educator, how to do what I'm doing. Wellness, health and wellness coaching. That's what we do. Now we do provide a health and wellness uh, 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 we uh, qualify them for health and wellness coach now for the last several years that has become international health and wellness coaching. Yes, Swain. I was going to say just from a personal testimony, mm. I did that school about mm. 23 years ago. Mm. And since that time, I've gotten two doctorates, one in physics and another mm. one in medicine. That's right. And I can say from experience that the information that they're giving at that school, and he didn't put me up to say this, that information is reality and is truth. And to this day, I'm still teaching when I do public lectures, mm. the very same information that you'll get yeah. at that school. And that's with a medical doctorate degree. And so you, I, I, how, I will how say many, How many degrees you got, Swain? I got two doctorate degrees. Two doctorate. Wow. In physics and in medicine. Do you hear and that? The information is just as good today. And I, I'm teaching a, a, a school right now up in Indiana of the same information, the same mm. information. And the benefit is now is that there's a lot of mm. medical research and scientific research that only now is starting to validate on. the stuff that I learned 23 years ago. That's right. From him, from now, at, at now, his school. So. But I just want to pause there for Swain. If, as, as Seventh-day Adventist Christian, you heard what he said, now they're catching up. Right. Now you remember, um, and what's the point? I'm give you a point. It's dealing with, there's a statement that Ellen White made way before uh, this substance was dealt with. It's called zinc. During our time, zinc was not even unfolded. And she used the word, there's a substance that is, that's being depleted that affects the brain. It affects the brain. She called it a substance. She did not identify what that substance was. And it said it affects the brain. And now, I, when I dealt pro, deal with pro, presentation on addiction, and especially with masturbation, and as I dealt with that, realizing that the semen contains high resources of zinc. Every ejaculation, you lose three days supply of zinc. Now you listen, now I have all this document, what, I'm just saying what, what he's saying, that medical doctors are not catching up with that. So what I'm saying, yes, we just the conduit. But when we read the inspiration, years ahead, it's still, now the same message I'm teaching now, it has not changed. You know, you become more refined how to present it, but the information doesn't change. You can't change truth. And now they're catching up with it. And I really appreciate you saying that. And so when I looked at that point with zinc, and therefore she didn't have a clue what it was, and how it affects the brain, now it's proven. And when people come, and I, and I can, well, story it itself, but I appreciate that. Yes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you, got, you got three minutes. If she's quiet, I'll be able to use my time up. And, and I wanted to... Uh, uh, piggyback on what you said. I used to deal with um, 9 through 12 students mm -hmm. at um, a school that I taught in Connecticut in high school. All right. And these students 
were very sexually active. Now you just telling me, you made a statement just now that using, uh, you, you comment on, on semen? Semen, sperm, okay. yeah. Now, with, okay, with oral sex, these students are engaging this. Mm -hmm. Now, how is that affecting those individuals who's taking that into their systems? Talking about the semen, yeah. what have you, which contains a lot of the toxin and things of this nature, and the body absorb that yeah. into the bloodstream. It gets into every cell of the body, Absolutely. interfere, oxidize it, okay. lose the potassium, et cetera, et cetera. It goes on because even though oral, you're going to absorb it through the mucous membrane lining into the blood scene. And because you find within the education process, uh, you know, they will say, you know, frequent, like masturbation, or et cetera. They call it frequent. You need to be moderate in those things. Mm. See, when we define moderation, we're talking about moderation, that which is good. Right. That's, our def that's the definition of the word of God. Not in promiscuity. So all that going to affect the brain, the disposition, the attitude. Yes, yes. All right, since my, but this information for us how to uh, donate, you can get on our website because he might have problems to get it up, and therefore we do have those avenues. So we're going to have another word of prayer. I thank you all for sticking around and for the lively questions and some things I'm learning like this cinnamon situation. I need to check that out because I do not claim to know all of that myself because I know one thing just to be safe right now until it's proven that you don't have to be concerned with it. And may God bless you on your way to true help and happiness and holiness. Let's keep one another in prayer. Let's have a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for your grace you've given us today. We thank you for your words of life from the morning up even to now. That Lord, you are the embodiment of wisdom. So we need your wisdom how to apply these principles. We need your grace. And I pray for every soul at the sound of my voice that we will come to you who is the source of our health, our source of our happiness, and even our salvation. Grant us all traveling mercies and be with those that are now making transition. I lift up Pastor Cuke and his wife as they get accustomed and adjusted. I pray for every other soul on the sound of my voice that we will have minds open to hear you speak to us in making the right decision. Let us make no move unless you approve is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Don't forget your drink outside. Yes, sir.